the universe was born 13.8 billion years ago. For most of us, its vastness is impossible to get our heads around. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the street to the chemist, but that's just peanuts to space. It's theoretical physicist Brian Greene's job to get his head around it. Way beyond the Earth, the Milky Way, and other distant galaxies, we may find that our universe is not the only universe, but is instead part of a vast complex of universes that we call the multiverse. Whoa. Whoa. Green describes humans as the product of purposeless, mindless laws of physics playing themselves out on our particles because we are all bags of particles. Jeez, to realize our own insignificance can be a real downer. Still, all the science guys like to bang on about it. This is Earth. And just a reminder, we're, we are a speck in the middle of a cosmic void. In Brian's world, physics and maths rule, and wormholes, intelligent life, and the multiverse aren't just the stuff of fiction. Green's latest book, Until the End of Time, is a rollicking yarn detailing the very beginning of the universe through to the very end. The end of the universe is chasing us. Live from one of the airports on this spec, Auckland Airport, is renowned physicist Brian Green. Brian, if the human race is dying and the universe is dying, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not to have an ultimate legacy. It's not about the far future. Even though the timescales for the end of life are enormous, we will all die. We'll all go away. We'll all disintegrate. So what's it about? It's about actualizing our potential as individuals, as a species, to, to illuminate wonder, to experience mystery, to create beauty. That is what it really is about. Love it. So how can we prepare? Can you tell us how and when the universe will end? <laughs> I can. <gasps> when we study the laws of physics, we learn that in a time scale of about 10 to the 68 to 10 to the 100 years, that's an enormous time scale, even black holes, which will be the last remaining structures in the universe, they will evaporate into a spray of particles, and then from then on, it will just be particles wafting through the darkness. That's where it all goes. Wow. Okay, when your bag of particles tells my bag of particles things like that, I, I feel a bit anxious, if I'm honest. Is there, is there something comforting that, that knowledge of the universe can provide us? I think it is. We, when we understand the universe well, recognize that we are deeply connected to the universe in a real physical sense. We are made of the same stuff. We're governed by the very same laws. And that can provide a sense of connection and communion to a larger reality that is very difficult to attain in any other way. So there is a deep comfort that I think mitigates the anxiety that certainly can come from thinking about the end of everything. Mm -hmm. Brian, how much of a fluke is it that us humans even exist? Well, I think it's an enormous fluke in the sense that there are so many individual events and processes that needed to happen in the long chain of evolution by natural selection to result in us human beings being here right now. But across the cosmos, because there are so many stars and so many planets, that kind of process may have played out many times. There may be many life forms out there. We don't know yet, but the numbers at least suggest that it's a real possibility. Okay, a real possibility. So where are the aliens, my guy? I want to hang out with them. I want to commune with them. I want to share particles with them. Oh, steady. <laughs> That's getting a little bit beyond my pay grade, but man, it sounds, it sounds wonderful to have that perspective. <laughs> Brian, most importantly, what is the most realistic movie about space that you have ever seen? Oh. oh. You know, it's, it's, it's tough to say. There are many good ones, but the one that really comes to mind immediately, you may be surprised by, it's, it's Planet of the Apes, the oh. original Planet of the Apes. Yeah. You remember the way they travel to Earth's futures by being in a spaceship, and it's true, Einstein taught us that if a ship goes near the speed of light, goes out into space and then comes back, the time on that ship will elapse at a different rate, slower than time on planet Earth. So when the astronauts come out of that ship, 
they will be in Earth's future. So Planet of the Apes didn't get it completely right, but the idea of traveling into Earth's future, that is a part of physics as we currently understand it, and that's not controversial. Oh. Wow, this bag of particles is blown away. Uh, please thank Professor Brian Green. Oh, woo. My pleasure, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, weirdly comforting to hear Brian speak. And if you want to know more of what he's got to say, he's at Auckland's Q Theatre tomorrow night. There are a few tickets left, and we've got the info about how to get your hands on them on our Facebook page. Just imagine someone at the airport that's checking in and he's doing that interview with us, <laughs> <laughs> listening in on that. What's that going uh, Where am I going? <laughs>